hey, I'm going to tell you some very important things about green tea based on our recent tests of all of these products at ConsumerLab.com. I'm Dr. Todd Cooperman, president of Consumer Lab. Now, first, the health benefits of green tea, such as modestly reducing LDL cholesterol and reducing cardiovascular disease, are typically associated with drinking two to three cups per day and are likely due to the polyphenols, which are antioxidants in green tea, particularly EGCG. A cup of good green tea will roughly have about 40 to 50 milligrams of EGCG per cup, and that gives it a little bit of astringency or bitterness, which you should look for when you're buying a green tea. Our test showed a wide range in terms of the amount of EGCG in these products. On the low end, we found as little as, say, 9 milligrams in this Arizona green tea, on the high end, we found over 100 milligrams in some products, such as uh, Trader Joe organic green tea. Now, you can also get these polyphenols and the EGCG from a supplement such as these, which typically come in capsules. And again, we found a wide variation, as little as 20 milligrams in one product per capsule, which is about half of what you'd get from a cup of green tea, to hundreds of milligrams of EGC in other products. Now, I'm not really a fan of taking green tea as a supplement because there have been a number of reported cases of liver injury with those types of supplements, especially when they're taken without food. Now, lead contamination is an issue with green tea because green tea leaf acts as a sponge and holds on to lead that might have come up from the soil. The good news, however, is that that lead tends to stay with the leaf when you brew it so that you're not actually getting that lead in the brewed tea. However, we did find that uh, about three of these products exceeded the very strict California limit for lead, which is half a microgram per day, and pregnant women should avoid those types of products. Now, there's a type of green tea called matcha green tea where you take the leaf it's, and ground it down to a very fine powder. Here's an example of it over here. Now, since you're actually mixing that into water and drinking the whole thing, you are getting that leaf as well. Fortunately, neither of the matcha products that we tested were contaminated with lead. Now there is caffeine in green tea, just as there is in coffee, but at a lower level in green tea. If you're concerned about that, you can get a decaf green tea. We tested several of them and found about eight or nine milligrams of caffeine per cup, which is actually a little bit higher than some of them are uh, proclaiming on their websites where they might say zero to two milligrams, but it's still a relatively low amount. Among the non-decaf products, we found about 15 to 60 milligrams per cup. And just as reference, a cup of coffee has about 100 milligrams of caffeine. Now, as with anything, use green tea in moderation. It does have a little bit of fluoride in it, which is actually a good thing at low levels because that will help strengthen teeth and bones. But if you're drinking green tea like water uh, and having it all day long, you can get too much fluoride and get fluorosis which means your teeth and bones actually become more brittle. So if you're one of more than 95,000 members of Consumer Lab who support our research, you can go online right now and see our results for each of these products as well as our top picks.